end up here on stage, it's time to consider death. Not on Earth, but up there. Death in the bleak emptiness of infinite space, the final frontier. If you were a pioneer out in the old frontier days, out in the old west, you'd be buried out on the lone prairie. If you were a sailor, you'd be buried at sea. But what do you do if you die up there? What's to be done with the dead in space? I'll show you what I do. First, I would get a coffin. Not just any coffin. One suitable for eternal slumber in infinity itself. But what's a coffin without a body? Yours will do nicely. and a body. Now all we need is some light and a little magic. A final farewell. A coffin and a body floating in space. Surrounded by the dark mysteries of the universe, light years above the earth, until finally. in a new town. It was a six, with plenty of room for improvement. Paul? Yeah, yeah, I know. Uh, spotlight should have been on you instead of the lady during the ring toss. It'll be there next time, I promise. All right, what happened just before intermission? Why to stall? Oh, it's the new belts. They are really hard to buckle. Everybody had a problem. Betty? I'm working on it, David. All right, thank you. And you were too far stage right during the finale. The spotlight almost missed you. I know, I'm sorry. I couldn't find my mark. I made it bigger. It won't happen again. I'm sorry. Thanks. All right, well, that's all I have. Anybody else have anything? Yeah, I do. I almost killed myself getting back on stage for the ice-cutting trick. Jake forgot to move the cabinet. I didn't forget. It's tight back there. I couldn't put it where I usually do. Oh, I see. So you were just going to leave it there so we could all trip over it. That's not very smart. I'm aware of the problem, and I'm working on it, okay? All right, make sure it's solved by the evening performance, okay, Jake? Okay. All right, if nobody else has anything, I'll see you all tonight in the green room. It was uncalled for Kate. If you had a beef, why didn't you just come to me? You were busy, Jake. Fixing your wife's all-important mark. You made me look bad. I don't like that. What are these files doing out? Your wife's with Betty. I think she's going to be there a while. Don't. Don't? That's sure not what you said in Portland. Portland was a mistake. We've been through this, Kate. It's over. No, David. I'm afraid that it isn't. David is going to love 
This. Oh, God, I'm good. Yeah, but can you do the rest of them by tonight? Pregnant? How the hell could you be pregnant? How the hell do you think? What are you going to do? It depends. On what? On what you're going to do. I know how badly you want kids. I'm married, Kate. You could always get a divorce. I don't want a divorce. Well, maybe Judy will. Look, don't you dare tell her. Don't you dare. You hear me? You tell anybody about this, and I'll make you sorrier than you've ever been in your life. You got that? You know what? I think maybe the best thing for me to do right now would be to take an extended leave of absence. You know, so I can make other arrangements. It's just the only problem is, is I, I, I just uh, can't afford it. How much? Why don't you and I give this some thought? And we'll talk later. After the show. All right? Oh, speaking of which. I really, really, really want to do that coffin routine from now on. Starting tonight. It is okay with you, isn't it? I'll tell Anne. Thanks. I mean, it is the very least you can do. Don't you think? What are you doing after the show tonight? I've got plans. Well, what about tomorrow night? Oh, I don't know how to say this in a nice way. So I won't. I'm not interested. Not even interested in helping me spend a thousand bucks? Where did you get a thousand dollars? Come to dinner with me, maybe I'll tell you. No, thanks. Oh, come on. Why not? Because you're not my type. I'm not your type. No. I got news for you. Any man with a thousand bucks in his pocket is your type. Paul, do you know how much money you're going to have left tomorrow? Nothing. Do you know why? You're a loser. David? Hi, I got your message. What's up? Yeah, look, Ann, I'm, uh... I'm gonna let Kate do the coffin act. What, you mean she gets to do the finale? Yeah, in fact, I've decided to let her... let her do the act from now on. Why? Because I said so, that's why. Oh. Look, Ann... I'm sorry. David... <laughs> All you have to do is reach around with your right hand and pull. See? Betty, I can't find my wand. I wondered if you'd seen it anywhere. It's not back here, sorry. Oh, did the front of the house get a hold of you? No, what did they want? Your guests are here. Yes. Oh, damn, I forgot all about them. Have you seen Judy anywhere? I haven't seen her. Would you find her, please? Tell her to meet me in the VIP suite. Tell her Perry Mason's here. Well, I think you'd better get them to their seats. Curtain's in 15 minutes. I'm sure David will want to see them after the show. So how long you known him? Three years. He performed at a benefit I helped organize to raise money for those kids. He wasn't famous then, but he certainly is now. Oh, but he still does the benefit every year. That's the only time we get to see him and Judy. Harry, good to see you again. Great to see you, David. <sighs> How are you, Della? Fine, David. Oh, David. <laughs> it's my uh, associate, Ken Melansky. Pleasure yeah. to meet you. Likewise. Harry's told me a lot about you. Glad you all could make it. I'm glad you gave Perry the comp tickets. My pleasure. Nice watch. Oh. 
Nice hands. <laughs> Perry, what's this I hear about the benefit falling short of its goal this year? Ah, uh, recessions tend to be hard on charity events. Do you think you'd meet your goal if I donated all the proceeds from tonight's performance? I'm sure we would. Then that's exactly what I'm going to do. Thank you very much. Judy and I have wanted to do this for a long time. Since we don't have any of our own. Judy. Where is Judy? I don't know. You know, I, I don't believe I, I told her you'd be here. Maybe we can all get together after the show. Yeah. Sure. David, are you all right? Oh, I'm fine. No, actually, that's a lie. I've misplaced my wand, my, my lucky wand. It's like, it's like a rabbit's foot, and I use it whenever I perform. Oh, that's like the handkerchief that Perry puts in his inside pocket when he's trying a case. <laughs> you have a lucky handkerchief? Uh-huh. Della is having a pipe dream. Oh. <laughs> well, anyway, I know it sounds ridiculous, but I'm not going to be able to relax until I find the damn thing, so if you'll excuse me. We'll catch up with you after the show. Come backstage. I'll leave word with security. Good luck. He was upset because he lost his lucky wand? Well, it isn't just a wand. It's a coping mechanism. Uh, it's his way of dealing with stage fright. Where'd you learn so much about psychology? <laughs> From a man with his uh, lucky handkerchief. Big pipe dream. <laughs> oh, Perry. What are you doing here? Well, what do you think I'm doing here, huh? You finally got my message and you came to see the show. Well, I wanted to see whether it was true. If what was true? That you've been stealing from me. Stealing from you? Who told you that? Before it gets around, kid. You were the best student I ever had, David. How could you... T How could you do this to me? Max, I assure you, I built every act in this show from the ground up. They may be based on principles you taught me, but I certainly didn't steal from you. Well, if you don't mind, I'd just as soon see for myself, huh? Go ahead. Ten minutes to curtain up, people. Where have you been? I've been looking all over for you. Got it. I've uh, been around. Perry's here. What's wrong? Nothing. Nothing's wrong. Now as we near the end up here on stage, it's time to consider death. Not on Earth, but up there. Death in the bleak emptiness of infinite space, the final frontier. If you were a pioneer in the frontier days of the Old West, you'd be buried out on the lone prairie. If you were a sailor, you'd be buried at sea. But what do you do if you die? Up there. What's to be done with the dead in space? I'll show you what I'd do. First, I would get a coffin. Not just any coffin. One suitable for eternal slumber in infinity itself. But what's a coffin without a body? Yours will do nicely. coffin and a body. Now all we need is some light and a little magic. A final farewell. A coffin and a body floating in space, surrounded by the dark mysteries of the universe, light years above the earth, until finally Somebody call an ambulance. All right, wow. So, what do we have here? 
Accident, Lieutenant. Well, we'll see, Counselor. We'll see. This is the gentleman. Sir, are you up to answering some questions? I think so. Mm-hmm. Okay, by you, Counselor. Depends on the question. Well, for starters, what was supposed to happen when this, this coffin opened up? Nothing. Nothing. It should have been empty, and Kate shouldn't have been anywhere near it. Well, where, where, where should Kate have been? In the wings, making her way out front for her reappearance. Uh, well, why don't you just run the whole thing down to me? You mean, tell you how it's done? Tell me how it's done. Sooner or later, David. What the audience doesn't see when the coffin is wheeled out on stage is this. One of my assistants gets in, I close the lid. She rolls through this flap into a secret compartment while my wife attaches a wire. You don't see her do that because her black outfit blends right into the black backdrop. And then I create a few visual and verbal distractions while my assistant rolls out of the compartment and slips through the curtain. And then as the coffin magically rises into the air, she makes her way to the wings and ultimately reappears in the audience. But we could see her in the coffin when it was going up. What you saw was a projection and a precisely synchronized pre-taped image, a movie, if you will, is projected onto the side of the coffin as it rises. You remember that little wave of farewell she gave? That's on tape, too. So the question is, why didn't Mrs. Ford get out of the coffin and into the compartment like she was supposed to? <laughs> well, Mr. Mason, because this flat wouldn't open, that's why. Uh, Bob. Bob, is this what you saw? Yes, sir. Uh, you see, this wand was jamming it shut. And once Miss Ford uh, got in this coffin, she was trapped. There was no place else for her to go but down. Now, the question is, does anybody have any idea who this belongs to? It's mine. I searched for it right up until curtain. And I grabbed a spare and I went on. But you usually kept the wand in your dressing room. I have no idea how it got into that coffin, I swear. God, this is awful. David, unless the DA can come up with some reason that you wanted Kate Ford dead, I seriously doubt you'll be arrested, so take it easy. Will they do an autopsy? Yeah. Standard procedure in cases of sudden or unusual death. Why? She was pregnant. She told me tonight before the show. Perry, I slept with her once. Just once. I'd had too much to drink. Not that that's any excuse. Who else might have been aware of all this? I don't know. She wanted money. Did you give her money? We were going to talk about it after the show. Your knock on the door was deafening. Mr. Katz, I'm afraid I'm going to have to place you under arrest now. What's the charge? First degree murder. Premeditation? We can prove premeditation. It seems there were two people standing outside Mr. Katz's dressing room door when Miss Ford hit him with the news she was pregnant. One was your wife, sir? Judy. And the other was the wardrobe lady. Miss Betty Farmer. And Miss Farmer is the one who told us everything. What do you mean, everything? Well, Mr. Mason, not only was your client very upset when Miss Ford hit him with the news, she was carrying his child. He also threatened her. I didn't threaten her. According to Miss Farmer, you did exactly that. And that, sir, is the stuff murder indictments are made of. Can you comment on the fact that you, uh, you explain your wife's plan My client has nothing to say. Where's your wife? Follow-up question. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Excuse me, excuse me. 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 Excuse
I'm sure that rule's broken many times. Hey, you should be grateful. That tape could come in very handy. If we can find it. Huh. Was the last night's show a sellout? They all are, or were. Well, since all the seats around us were reserved, it should be pretty easy to track down the people that were sitting there. An absolute, if I ever heard one. I'll get right on it. I'll get right on it, too. <clears throat> David, does everyone involved in this show know how the coffin trick works? I don't hire anyone unless they sign a document prohibiting them from divulging my secrets. Then any one of them could have sabotaged that trick. I guess so, yeah. Our first order of business, who on the show might have wanted Kate Ford dead? Wait a minute. The file. File? What file? The one I keep the design for the glass coffin in. I think someone may have rummaged through it while I was in the shower yesterday. Of course, you have no idea who. I have no idea who. Perry, I, uh, I haven't talked to Judy since I was arrested. Is it okay if I call her? Sure, right there. She must be very angry with me. Room 519, please. My name's Mason. I'm David Katz, attorney. I'd like to ask you a few questions. Sure. Um, come on in. Excuse the mess. I just took some things to the laundromat. How's David? Oh, he's doing fine. David tells me that he hired you and your husband about six months ago. Yes, that's right. Did you know Kate Ford very well? No, uh, I hardly knew her at all. But you worked right alongside her for six months, didn't you? Yes, I did. Let's just say I didn't really want to know her. I, um, I don't think she was the world's nicest person, if you know what I mean. Anne, I'm all out of socks. Jake, this is David's lawyer, Mr. Mason, my husband, Jake Morrison. How do you do? Uh, what do you want with Anne? Just asking some general background questions. I understand you're the one who wheels the coffin out on the stage each performance. That's right. Did you happen to notice anyone standing around by the coffin before you wheeled it out last night? Madhouse backstage during a performance. Nobody but nobody ever stands around. Especially Jake. Mr. Morrison, how did you get along with Kate? I didn't. As far as I could tell, neither did anybody else. She had a real problem with her attitude. I'm told you used to have a somewhat similar problem. Yeah, I got mad easy, that's all. Broke a man's legs during a barroom brawl. Did time in prison for it. I'd do it again, too. Really? Why? It was about my daughter, and it's none of your business. You're right. But if it does become my business, I'll be in touch. My name's Ken Molansky. I work with Perry Mason. Perry Mason, the attorney? Yeah. I'm his secretary. Mr. Wheatner's not available. Is there anything I can do for you? A beautiful young woman taped David Katz's show a couple nights ago. So? That wouldn't happen to be you, would it? Why do you want to know? Mr. Mason's interested in taking a look at that tape. That's all. I don't know if Mr. Wheaton would want me to discuss this. Look, I'll leave him a message along with your card, and when he gets back from wherever he is, he'll call you, okay? Great. Thanks. No problem.
Yeah, I expect him in sometime this afternoon, but, you know, you never Excuse know. Excuse me. His lunches can get quick. You know what I mean? Excuse me. Uh, just, Excuse me. Just a second. Yeah, I was supposed to have lunch with Terry Weidner, but I forgot the name of the restaurant. Well, she usually has something for She? Ahead. If you hurry, you can catch her. She just went out the front door. Yeah, I'm back. I don't understand why you're so worried. Harry Mason is a major league lawyer who only gets involved in murder cases, that's why. The tape you made for me has nothing to do with anyone's murder. What does it have to do with? I can't tell you. I don't like being caught in the middle like this. Look, you're not in the middle of anything, I can assure you. Now, you've done excellent work, you've been very well paid, and should I require your services in the future, I will be sure to contact you. Hmm? All of which is to say, goodbye. Certainly stands out like, well, a bright red car, Miss Wiener. I suppose this piece of junk is your car. Yeah, well, you didn't see me following you, did you? And it wouldn't hurt to dress a lot less flamboyantly either. Look, would you stop patronizing me? I get enough of that for my clients. Like Max Lamar in there? Checked him out while you were inside. A piece of junk's got a phone in it. He's a magician, David Katz's mentor. He's probably the one you made the videotape of the show for, isn't he? Maybe. Why do you want a tape of the show? Why does Perry Mason want a tape of the show? Because it could help him prove that David Katz is innocent. Now you answer my question. <sighs> Lamar wouldn't tell me. However, I have a proposition for you. You see, believe it or not, business hasn't been going all that well for me lately. Well, try firing that part-time secretary of yours. She lies. <laughs> what I need is credibility. And I figure the best way to get it is by working for somebody famous, like your boss, for instance. <laughs> now, why should he hire you? Because of what I can offer. What's that? A duplicate of that tape. A coffin and a body floating in space. We're looking for something out of the ordinary. Is everything exactly as it should be so far? That's all there is. When I saw her fall, I dropped the camera. You noticed nothing, David? Nothing, I'm sorry. Well, it was worth a try. Why did Max Lamar want a tape of David's show? I'm afraid that's privileged information, Mr. Mason. Lamar wouldn't tell her. That too. Terry, we really want to thank you. Here you go. Oh, I don't want a check. I want a job. We had a deal. You promised me. Now, wait a minute. I promised you'd be paid. I never promised you a job. Well, let's just call it even. Nothing for nothing. <clears throat> she misunderstood. David, uh, take a look at this. Who's Greta Eisman? Kate Ford. Greta Eisman's her real name. She changed it eight years ago. You didn't know that? No. She ever talk about her past? I think she once told me she was from... Kansas, Wichita, I think. No, she was born right here in Colorado, a little town called Hastings. Why would she lie like that? Oh, it could very well have something to do with her murder. Ken, a fact-finding mission. Hastings, Colorado. Hastings, Colorado. 
David tells me you moved out, but you won't see him. I don't know what to say. Well, we had quite a talk. David told me I know you can't have children. I also know from your involvement in the benefit each year how much you love them. Hearing that Kate was pregnant must have been a horrible blow. I couldn't believe it, Perry. That woman pregnant with David's child. Just like that. He and I had been trying for years. It seems so unfair. The police questioned you after her death. You didn't tell them what you'd overheard. Why not? I don't know. It could be construed that you were trying to hide the fact that you had a motive for killing Kate. I never thought of that. Killing myself, yes, but Kate. I was uh, trying to protect David. I still love him. Judy, talk to him. Give him a chance to explain. He made a mistake, a big one. He misses you. When will Mr. Eisman be back? All right. Thanks anyway. Excuse me. Excuse me. My name's Ken Molansky. I'm an attorney. I'm working on a murder case down in Denver. How can I help you? Well, I'm looking for information on Greta Eisman. Greta Eisman from Hastings? Yeah, she moved away about eight years ago. Sorry, you've got the wrong town. All right, great. Thanks. I haven't had the pleasure of meeting all of you yet. I'm Perry Mason, David's attorney. I'd like you to watch a tape that was made the night Kate Ford was killed. As members of the cast and crew, you might see something in it that will jog your memory and shed some light on what happened that night. Can everyone see? Yeah. 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 Ms. Morrison, would you like to move closer? Oh, no, thank you. I, I'm fine. I, I have 20-20 vision. I'm okay. Now as we near the end up here on stage, it's time to consider death, not on Earth. First, I would get a coffin. Not just any coffin. One suitable for eternal slumber in infinity itself. But what's a coffin without a body? Yours will do nicely. Now all we need is some light and a little magic. A final farewell. A coffin and a body floating in space, surrounded by the dark mysteries of the universe, like years above the Earth, until finally, did you notice anything that might be of significance? Anything at all? Well, thank you anyway. I appreciate your coming down. That's all. That was very clever. What was? 
Well, we watched the tape while you watched us. If you'll excuse the expression, I don't miss a trick. Then perhaps you'll tell me who killed Kate Ford. I guess it was your client. Uh, I'm sorry, but if you had heard what I heard, you'd think so, too. Not that I blame him at all. I understand your younger sister used to be with the show. Anita was one of David's assistants. Why? I hear Kate was instrumental in getting her fired. And that you were very angry with her and David about that. But not angry enough to kill her. If that's what you're getting at. Maybe you didn't mean to kill her. Maybe you just wanted to make sure that she or David never performed again. I'm looking for information on Greta Eisman. Who? Oh? Greta Eisman. Born here, moved away about eight years ago. Never heard of her. I've lived here all my life. Well, I figure she's related to the Henry Eisman that owns that sawmill on the way into town. Only Eisman in the book. Can't seem to get in touch with him, though. Mr. Eisman doesn't have any relatives. He used to have a daughter. He did? Got herself into trouble. Ah, don't pay any attention to him. Been drunk for five years straight. Half the time he doesn't know where he is. Come on, Casey, drink up and quit bothering my customers. What kind of trouble, Casey? Maybe I better tell you about this outside. Come on. Oh, Lynn, here. Harvey, get him out of here, would you? We got him. Oh, come on. Just leave those boys alone. It just said Eisman had a daughter. Stick around long enough, he'll tell you about the time little green men took him for a ride in their spaceship. Went to one of the moons of Jupiter. <laughs> I'm afraid I don't know what you're talking about. Didn't you have Terry Wiedner make a tape of David's show the night Kate Ford was murdered? No. Of course not. I understand much, if not most, of what David knows about magic came from you. Well, that is to be expected. I am the best. Or you were the best. These days, most people would say, David is the best. That does not mean it is true. But David's popularity has certainly grown, hasn't it? It now overshadows yours, doesn't it? Isn't that why you went through his files and had Terry make that tape? Not to see if he was stealing from you, but to see if you could steal from him. That's outrageous. Mr. Lamar, when you saw the plans to that coffin, did you memorize them? Or did you put them to immediate use? Are you suggesting that I had something to do with that poor girl's death? Let's say David wouldn't be a threat to you anymore if he were in prison. And you, you'd have your revenge. Get out. Or you'll make me disappear? Just leave. Please give Mr. Torrance my regards.
tomorrow morning, you pack up and move on. Yeah? This doesn't concern you, lady. After I stormed out of Mr. Mason's office, I listened in at the door. You what? I listened in at the door. And when I heard where you were going, I rented the dullest car they had, got the dullest clothes I could find, drove straight here, rented a room right down the hall, and beat you by 15 minutes. Well, I suppose I should be grateful. So, why do you think everybody in town has a thing about Greta Eisman? I said I was grateful, not that I needed a partner. I know where those Goonie brothers took that old drunk. Where? Give me some incentive and I might tell you. All right, you're in. It's not good enough. This time, I want to hear it from Perry Mason himself. Somebody broke into David's dressing room down at the theater tonight. Oh, yeah? I know who it was. As you know, David has all his employees sign an agreement stating they can be sued if they divulge any of his secrets. Apparently, the thief took only the one you had signed. No kidding. You're on Max Lamar's payroll, aren't you? Or at least you were on the night Kate Ford was murdered. No. That's where you got the roll of bills you kept flashing that night. Why you were at Lamar's house earlier today. Why you were at the theater tonight, stealing that agreement. I don't know what you're talking about. No? Lamar was paying you to pass on David's secrets. You were afraid that would come out during the trial. 
You destroyed your agreement with David so he couldn't sue you. Prove it. Oh, I will, Mr. Torrance. I will. And much more. What do you mean? Sit down. It's a well-known fact that you made frequent passes at Cape Ford. Passes that were rejected, always rejected. So? So a man can only take so much rejection, right, Mr. Torrance? Oh, wait a minute here. Max Lamar wanted to avenge himself on David. You wanted to avenge yourself on Kate. You knew how the coffin trick worked. It was perfect, a perfect arrangement, wasn't it? No. I didn't kill her, I swear it. I, I, I was mad at her, okay? But I didn't kill her. You gotta believe me. Do something for me, Mr. Torrance. You name it, you got it. How would you like to be a witness for the defense? When I saw that you weren't going to see where they took Casey, I decided I might as well. All right. So you're good. Mm -hmm. So how come you're a PI? How come you're a lawyer? Come on, male lawyers are a dime a dozen. Female PIs aren't. Well, maybe we should be. Why is that? Let's face it, PIs spend 99.9% .9 of their time looking for people and or things, right? Well, I'll buy that. Well, women are better at finding things than men are. That I don't buy. <laughs> Come on. I can still hear my father calling out, Honey, have you seen my wallet? Or, or where did I put my keys? Or, or where's the remote control? Does that sound familiar? Where is this place? It's up ahead on the left. Solid. You get the idea. I think so. Morning, Della. Do you realize we're due in court in 45 minutes? We're on our way. Oh, Perry. Della. I want you to check with every optometrist in town. See if someone connected with David's show ordered a pair of contact lenses on the day of his final performance. Every optometrist. Do you realize how many there are in a city this size? 257. <laughs> Hey, Casey! Alright. Watch out. Alright, don't even say it. Just open the door. Casey, come on, get out of here. Casey, come on, get out of here. It's a skunk. Looks like somebody wanted to make sure he stayed that way. See anything around here that looks like coffee? I don't see anything around here that looks like food, unless you count these cockroaches. Well, looks like we're going to be here for a while. I'm going to stash the truck. Good idea. Stands out like a sore thumb.
I will prove that David Katz, with malice aforethought, killed Kate Ford. I will prove that, although he is a married man, he not only had an affair with the victim, he impregnated her. I will prove that when she told him her sordid secret, he threatened her life. And I will prove that as soon as the opportunity presented itself, he caused Kate Ford to die a horrible death hoping it would be construed as nothing more than a tragic accident. I will prove to you, ladies and gentlemen, that while David Katz may be a world-famous illusionist, he is also a cold-blooded murderer. An illusionist is one who performs illusions. I'm glad Mr. Willard brought that up because this case turns on illusions and you'd be well advised to keep that in mind. What's an illusion? Something which appears to be one thing but is actually something else. In fact, Mr. Willard is something of an illusionist. He's going to attempt to show that my client is guilty when in fact my client is innocent. He's going to try to make you believe one thing when just the opposite is true. <coughs> Excuse me. Training, ladies and gentlemen. Anyone can perform an illusion. The fact that a woman is dead is no illusion. But the idea that David Katz is somehow responsible for that death is wrong and is an illusion. I'm going to prove that to you. Continue, Mr. Mason. Well, Your Honor, Kate Ford was killed during a very elaborate theatrical production choreographed to conceal as much as reveal. Because of time and space, it is critical to the defense and to presentation of evidence to the jury that our witnesses testify at the actual scene of this crime. I ask the court to reconvene in the theater where Kate Ford was murdered. Mr. Willard? Sounded ridiculous to me, Your Honor. But I'll try this case wherever this court wishes to send me. Well, this is the most unusual venue request I've ever experienced. But you know I believe in a fair and speedy trial for both the defendant and the prosecution. So I'll grant this motion. And we'll reconvene at the Paramount Theater at uh, 11 o'clock. Try walking in faster. I am walking in faster. This is just not working. But the great two kiss of birth. It's a miracle he didn't die. Oh. The way he smells, I'm not so sure he didn't. Uh, and look, he's coming too! Casey. Oh. Casey. Come on, Casey. Wake up. Huh? Casey, huh? What? You okay? Who are you? My name's Ken Molansky. We met at the Gold Coin Saloon. You were telling me about Greta Eisman, remember? No. I might have had a drink, though. Here you go. Looks like coffee. It is coffee. What do you want in it? A double shot of bourbon would be nice. Milk. You need protein. Uh, well, who died and made you two, God? We just want to know about Greta Eisman. You were telling me she got into some kind of trouble. She ran over a lady with a car and killed her. Hit and run. Was she caught? Her daddy owns a big sawmill. Mm. When he says jump, people in Hastings ask how high. Mm. And when he says don't say nothing, people don't say nothing. 
You made sure she was never prosecuted? Oh, the police never even asked her any questions. She left town a couple of weeks later and never came back. And people are still protecting her? Her daddy still owns the sawmill. It's about the only thing keeping this town alive. What was the name of the woman she killed? You remember? I don't even remember your name, and you just told me a couple of minutes ago. It was in the paper, I bet. Hastings does have a newspaper, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. The Weekly Register Call. I know, I sleep on it all the time. Where are we going? We're going to go outside. You need the air out. No, I don't. And we need to get out. Yo, Casey. Hey, Casey. Doesn't look like he's in there. Here's a hundred bucks. Hide them somewhere in town. Meet me at the newspaper office. I'm out of here. When the secret compartment was examined, this wand was uh, found. It was jammed up against the flap between the compartment and the coffin in such a way that the uh, flap couldn't open. You mean the victim was supposed to roll into the secret compartment before the coffin was lifted into the air, only because of this wand she couldn't? That is correct. Could this wand have gotten jammed in there by accident? Objection. Well, lack of foundation, improper opinion. Withdraw the question. Lieutenant, were you able to disengage the wand easily? Objection. Relevancy. Overruled. You may answer, Lieutenant. No. Somebody or something had jammed it up against that flap. Thank you. Nothing further. Thank you. Lieutenant, didn't your investigation disclose that it was well known among the performers and stage crew that Mr. Katz kept this wand in his dressing room? Yes, almost everyone knew that, Mr. Mason. And before the performance, that glass coffin was kept on the stage inaccessible to any performers or stagehands. Apparently so. And you were not able to find anyone who saw Mr. Katz jam this wand into the flap of that coffin, were you? No, Mr. Mason. Thank you, Bye. Lieutenant. That's all. So you could hear them talking even though the door was shut? Yes. 
Their voices were quite loud. They were both very upset. What exactly did the defendant say to Miss Ford? I can't remember his exact words, but I think he said something like, um, if you tell anybody about this, I'm going to make you very sorry. That's all? It wasn't just what he said. It was how he said it. His, his voice was, it was just so full of hate, it scared me. So he told Miss Ford he would make her very sorry. And six hours later, she was dead. Thank you. <clears throat> Ms. Farmer, after David Katz fired your sister last year, you had a confrontation with him, did you not? I may have. In fact, you said something like, I'm going to pay you back for this, did you not? Oh, I don't remember. Several people were present when you said that, were they not? If I said that, it was because I was angry. You were angry with him and you threatened him, did you not? It wasn't a threat. Oh? Why not? Because I didn't actually mean it. How do you know David Katz actually meant what he said to Kate Ford that night? I suppose I don't. In point of fact, you left before their conversation ended that night, did you not? Yes. I have nothing further. This court will reconvene at 2 o'clock. How many performances were there on the day in which Kate Ford was killed? Two, a matinee and an evening performance. So the glass coffin illusion was performed earlier that day as well as that night? Yes. Who got into the coffin for the matinee? Miss Ford? No, I did. In fact, up until that evening, I always did the coffin trick. I could get out of the compartment the fastest. Why did you decide to let Miss Ford do it that night? I didn't. David did. He asked me to come to his dressing room after the matinee, and he told me that he had decided to let Kate do the finale that night. Did he say why? No. Had anything like this ever happened before? No, never. You mean, for the first and only time, David Katz arranged it 
so that Kate Ford got into that coffin that night instead of you? Yes. Thank you. Mr. Mason, wish to cross? I reserve the right to recall the witness and request a 10-minute recess to confer with my client, Your Honor. Very well. Ten minutes. Judy's not being here has me really upset, Perry. I'm sorry. I meant to tell you, but I forgot. It just slipped my mind, Perry. You've got to, you've got to believe me. David, even if it hadn't slipped your mind, we have no rebuttal. The prosecution just established premeditation. But Kate forced me to make the switch. But I have no way of proving it. Nobody's supposed to get the time of day to. See in town? I bought this paper about two years ago. First thing they tell you is don't cross the old man. Cosgrove, Terry Wiedner. Pleasure. Hi. On the other hand, it doesn't pay to ignore a good story. That's why I'm in the newspaper business. His daughter was just murdered. You had a daughter? Yeah, she changed her name to Kate Ford, moved away about eight years ago after being involved in a hit and run accident that left a woman dead. No kidding. That accident may have something to do with her murder. I figure you might have something in your files. They're back here. Help yourself. The filing system here isn't exactly state of the art. It's more like state of the dump. Do you have any coffee? I'd love some. Mr. Katz, would you please tell the court why you had Kate Ford do the coffin illusion instead of Ann Morrison? Kate told me she wanted to do it. Why would she do that? It was the only time during the show any of the women would get to have a featured role. And why did you give in to her? If I hadn't, she would have told my wife about our relationship. So, she blackmailed you into letting her do the coffin routine? Yes. When did she do this blackmail? At the beginning or end of your conversation? as she was leaving. Which would explain why Ms. Farmer failed to overhear it. Mr. Katz, did you cause Kate Ford to fall to her death by sabotaging that coffin? No, absolutely not. David, do you still love your wife? I could never love anyone else. That's all. Care to cross, Mr. Whelan? Um, just one or two questions, Your Honor. To your knowledge, no one ever heard Kate Ford ask to be put into the coffin, did they? No, apparently not. So, uh, all we have is your word? Yes. Is that your favorite wand, Mr. Katz? Your, uh... Lucky wand? Yes, it is. You claim to have misplaced your uh, lucky wand and that you did not sabotage this coffin in order to cause Kate Ford's death. Is that right? That's correct. So, all we have is your word. Yes. When you married your current wife, did you vow to love, honor, and cherish her? Yes, I did. Forsaking all others? Yes. You gave her your word, too, didn't you? Yes, I did, and I broke it. And I only hope that she can forgive me. Well, that's a very nice touch, Mr. Katz. You're a very able performer. Objection. Mr. Willard's not asking questions. He's apparently commencing his final argument. Sustained. You did know that Kate Ford was pregnant, didn't you? with your child? She said she was. Did you believe her? 
I knew it was possible. And you were afraid that public knowledge of your affair would ruin your marriage. It might even affect your career, weren't you? Yes, I was. So you sabotaged that coffin. You put Kate Ford into it, and you nearly made it appear as an accident, didn't you? No, I did not. I've sworn to tell the truth, and I am telling the truth. Nothing further. Redirect, Mr. Mason. One last question. I've asked it before, but I'll rephrase it. Mr. Katz, did you kill Kate Ford? No, sir. I did not. Mr. Willard? Nothing, Your Honor. Witness may step down. Next witness, Mr. Mason. Defense calls Paul Torrance to the stand. How long have you been with David's company, Mr. Torrance? Two years. In what capacity? As lighting director. And what is a lighting director? Well, basically, uh, I make sure what people are supposed to see is lit and what people aren't supposed to see isn't. Did you know Kate Ford? Sure. How well did she get along with the other members of the company? I wouldn't say she got along well with anybody. She didn't have a lot of friends? As far as I know, she didn't have any. Objection. Whether the victim was or wasn't popular with her peers has no bearing on this case. Mr. Willard would have this court believe that my client is the only person who had a motive for killing Kate Ford. I'm attempting to show otherwise, Your Honor. I'll allow this line of questioning. Proceed, Mr. Mason. What was Miss Ford like? Selfish, vindictive, mean, stuck up. All of those things, yet you asked her out. She was also great looking. Uh -huh. As a lighting director, do you stay in one spot during a performance or do you move around? I move around. Where are you during the glass coffin illusion? Uh, up on the catwalk. That one right up there. I was uh, doing the uh, projector. So when the coffin is lifted into the air above the stage, you're not that far from it. Is that correct? Right. Why didn't you do anything when you heard her scream? Heard who scream? Miss Ford. She didn't scream. But she was trapped. Are you saying she didn't cry out or pound on the sides of the coffin? That she just lay there waiting to fall to her death? Look, all I know is I didn't hear or see anything. Mr. Torrance, doesn't make much sense, does it? Thank you, that's all. Mr. Willard? No questions. A witness may step down. This court is adjourned till 9 a.m. tomorrow morning. Harry. Here's the information on the contact lenses. Huh. How many optometrists did I say there were? 257. Oh, you did a great job. There were 258. Yes! 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 I found it. Oh, sorry. Hit and run accident, Queen's life. Why don't you get the truck? I'll meet you out front, okay? Oh, no way. No way. I am not driving back to Denver in a truck with a broken window. It's the dead of winter. Are you kidding? I'm getting my rental. Wait a sec, but I love my truck. It's a beautiful truck, Ken, but I'm getting my rental. Can I get a copy of this? Sure. You found what you wanted? Yeah, that was great. Thanks a lot. Come on. Harvey, he's over here. Hold it right there. You really don't want to do that. We sure don't, son. Let me guess. You're a father, right? 
My daughter is dead. The man who killed her is about to be punished. That's all that matters. The man on trial is innocent. I'm trying to find out who did kill her. Don't you want to know the truth? I want my daughter to rest in peace. No, you don't. You just don't want people to know what she did here. That's all you care about. Take care of this for me, will you, boys? Move it out, pal. Now. Get in! Hey, get off! What? Get in! Driving. I know. Oh, really? That was great timing. I know. <laughs> Mason. Perry, I just got back. I have all your messages. Judy, we've been worried to death. Where the hell have you been? I spent the day with the children, and tonight I just uh, spent the time driving around till I could figure things out. David's beside himself. You know, it's a good thing you weren't needed in court today. Now, I know you and David have your differences, but you have to be in court in the morning. You have to be. Perry, I'll be there. I promise I'll be there. I'm sorry, Judy. It's... It's just that we all love you. I know. Thank you, Perry. Good night. Evidently, Kate or Greta back then just hit that woman and kept driving right on down the road without even slowing down. But none of the witnesses could identify her as the driver. Oh, they could, but they just didn't want to. Says here the victim was from Cheyenne, Wyoming. She and her daughter were on their way to visit friends in Gunnison. Well, this tells us who killed Kate Ford. Now the question is, can you prove it? Let's try this. And a little magic. A final farewell. A coffin and a body floating in space. Surrounded by the dark mysteries of the universe. Light years above the Earth. As part of the demonstration discussed in chambers, my client will reenact the glass coffin illusion. Simultaneously, we will play what has been marked Defense Exhibit M, a videotape. The prosecution is stipulated to be an actual tape of the performance the night Kate Ford was killed. As I indicated in chambers, Your Honor, the state has continuing relevancy and foundation objections to this entire demonstration. Your objections are noted and overruled. Your Honor, in case we need someone to clarify these proceedings, defense recalls Mr. David Katz. Mr. Katz, you're still under oath. Yes, Your Honor. All right, places, everyone. Uh, with uh, Kate Ford dead, you're missing an assistant, are you not? That's correct. Ms. Farmer, would you be kind enough to stand in for Kate Ford? Good. Now we have six women. Go ahead, Mr. Katz. All right, Jake, let's take it from your entrance. Okay. First, I, First, would, get I would get a coffin. Not just any Not coffin. Not just any coffin, one suitable for eternal slumber in infinity itself. But what's a coffin without a body? Yours will do Yours nicely. Will do nicely. A coffin, a coffin, and a body. And now a body. all we need, now all we need, is some light, some light. 
and and a little a little magic. A final farewell. A coffin and a body floating in space surrounded by the dark mysteries of the universe. Light years above the earth until final Your Honor, I object. Lights, Mr. Torrance. Mr. Mason, that is something we did not discuss in chambers. I'm sorry to cause a commotion, Your Honor, but I assure you it was entirely germane to this demonstration. Then get on with it. So skilled is my client at making an audience look where he wants it to look that I doubt anyone in this room noticed that Mr. Melansky had stopped the tape. We stopped it because we'd like you, the jury, to compare the number of assistants you see on stage right now with the number you see on the tape. One, two, three, four, five. And one backstage, having slipped out of the coffin through the secret compartment before it began to rise. Five women on stage. Now look at the tape. One, two, three, four. Only four women on stage. Where's the other one, Mr. Katz? I don't know. There should be five women on stage. Were all six women always on stage at the same time during your show? No, in point of fact, this illusion was the only time they were all on stage together. Because it was the finale? Yes. Who's missing? Can you tell? Not from this distance. You mean if they were close up, you could tell them apart? Sure. But in costume, they look exactly alike, don't they? To an audience, they are mirror images of each other. Yes, but not to me. How do you tell them apart? By their eyes. The shape, the color. Sandy's eyes are hazel. Jeanette's are gray. I know Anne's are blue. What about Kate Ford? Do you remember the color of her eyes? Brown. She had brown eyes. Your Honor, at this time, I'd like to recall Anne Morrison to the stand. You recently bought a pair of contact lenses, did you not? Yes. You picked them up on the same day you ordered them, rush job? No prescription involved? You wanted them for cosmetic reasons? Yes. To change the color of your eyes, is that correct? Yes. What color did you want your eyes to be? Brown. Same as Kate Ford's. Mrs. Morrison, how did your mother die? She was, um... Went over by car. Who was driving that car? Um, I don't know. The police never caught anybody. It was a uh, hit and run. But you found out who it was, didn't you? Uh, Mr. Morrison, would you please step forward? Please uh, sit there, Mr. Morrison. Jake Morrison. Jake Morrison is your father, is he not? Not your husband, your father. He's your father. Wasn't your father, Jake Morrison, serving a sentence for assault at the time of the accident? Didn't that fact cause you to spend several years drifting in and out of foster homes? Didn't you and your father grow to hate the woman who destroyed your lives? And wasn't that woman Kate Ford? Don't look at your father, look at me. Didn't you find Kate Ford was working for David Katz? Didn't you pose as man and wife so Kate wouldn't know who you were when you finally got a job on David's show? Then you waited, didn't you? You waited. 
Kate Ford had gotten away with it when she killed your mother. You wanted to get away with it when you killed Kate Ford, isn't that so? No. When you heard Kate would do the coffin routine that night, you knew you had your chance. You and your father. Your father killed Kate with his bare hands. With his bare hands. He broke her neck. Then placed her body in the secret compartment and waited for his cue. When it came, he wheeled the coffin on stage as usual. David, fooled by the brown contact lenses you were wearing, put you into the coffin thinking you were Kate. He closed the lid. You rolled into the secret compartment, then shoved Kate's body into the coffin. The wand you'd stolen from David's dressing room you used to jam the flap. You slipped out of the compartment, through the curtain, waited until all eyes were on the rising the coffin. The then you slipped back on stage. Ann Morrison. You thought everyone would assume that you were Kate Ford. You thought no one would ever suspect you of being an accomplice to murder. An accomplice to her murder. Leave her alone. She's been through enough. I'm the one who murdered Kate. Mason, you could move to dismiss. We move to dismiss, Your Honor. Mr. Willard? The uh, state has uh, no objection. This case is dismissed, and the jury is excused. Bailiffs, please take these two people into custody. Glad you came. <laughs> so much. <am I. laughs> well, I still don't know how you did it. We magicians never reveal our secrets. <laughs> anyway, I'm very grateful. And I. Yes. Oh, oh, we'll be right there. Judy. In our long talk, David told me that your future included adopting two kids. But Judy, you were way ahead of us. You already had them picked out. Kevin, Sarah, you know Judy. I want you to meet someone who is going to love you just as much as she does. Kevin, Sarah, this is David. Thank you. 